the universal frequent flyer model is the Satoshi, right? And lightning is the method to deliver that. This is Samson Mao and we're at Bitcoin Miami 2023 and I have a couple of questions about Lightning. All right. What's the most inspiring real world application that you've seen with, with Lightning? Well, I still like to think Lightning is good for micropayments. Yeah. Larger payments still have issues with routing and I think there are other things like Liquid that can amplify that and make it better. Um, I think, uh, yeah, payments and getting people on board into the network quickly are very important. So that's what Lightning is for me. Okay, and how important is collaboration for Lightning? In which sense? Interoperability, collaborating among companies. It's very important. Uh, if you don't, if you are not interoperable, then there is no Lightning network. It'll just fragment. So. Hopefully all the teams are still working together well and there's not much drama. Okay. And what kind of advice would you give to someone that wants to start out with Lightning and wants to help in development? Oh, start out in terms of development, right? Mm -hmm. I would say first play with it. Run, uh, run a Bitcoin node, run uh, a C Lightning node, CLN node, and just get started and play with it and learn about all the different aspects of Lightning and how to balance your channels and things like that. What's the most interesting thing about Lightning that you'd like to share? I think the most interesting thing about Lightning is how to connect it with Liquid using a peer swap. Because that is a really good way for Lightning users to rebalance their channels. And I think that's largely being stepped on right now. Really? Um, how so? Well, not many people are thinking like that, um, like how to deal with liquidity issues in Lightning. But there is that that new project called PeerSwap that can help people use Liquid to balance back. Okay, and how can we make Lightning easier for people to use? And what would you like to see developed? Well, Lightning is really already very easy to use. You just use a custodial Lightning wallet, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just like people still use SPV wallets on their phone, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's not really an issue about uh, end user usability. It's pretty good right now. Like, compared to Bitcoin years ago, it's uh, leaps and bounds ahead. But I think what we want is for ways that people can use Bitcoin without using it, because use Lightning without the custodial services. And I think that's a road that people haven't really focused on yet. Okay, great. And what's something you'd like to share to the Lightning community? Check out Liquid. Check out Liquid. All right. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Marcel Romero and I am a reporter for the Austin Report and also I work in a marketing and PR agency dedicated to working with Bitcoin clients. And today I'm here at the Miami Bitcoin Conference doing a small interview about Lightning. Awesome, thank you. I have a couple of questions for you. First one, how do you see the Lightning Network contributing to the scalability and transaction speed of Bitcoin? Well, I feel like it's vital, um, especially right now with the whole panorama in Bitcoin. I was recently in El Salvador and Chivo uh, ATMs don't have Lightning. So there was a Salvadorian in front of me doing a transaction and he had to do it on chain. He was doing $100 and had to pay a $21 fee. For someone in a country where the monthly salary is $300, solutions like Lightning are key for adoption. Um, when you go to the global south, money is scarce. People work really hard for every penny that they have. Solutions like Lightning, uh, layer two solutions that are cheaper and faster are exactly what's needed, not just for you to go buy your cup of coffee at Starbucks, but for people that actually send money back and forth to be able to survive on a monthly basis. All right, second question. In your opinion, what are the main challenges that need to be addressed for wider adoption of the Lightning Network? 
There's a lot of questions regarding security. There's a lot of um, education questions. People don't understand what is a layer two, what's the difference between working on Bitcoin Core. Um, so it needs to be easier. Not everyone is going to be running a Lightning node. Not everyone's going, not everyone that needs Bitcoin has the education to be able to understand Lightning at its, at its um, core and Bitcoin itself. So we need to find a way to make it easier for people to be educated on it. Question number three. Can you share any successful use cases or real world applications of the Lightning Network that you find particularly inspiring? Actually, the people from Bitcoin Jungle in Costa Rica have done an amazing job. Um, I was there in March for Nostrica. Anyone that was there could tell you that at the level of education, any, everyone was very well versed on how to use Lightning. You would go to a coffee shop and it was not just the owner of the coffee shop who was into Bitcoin and into Lightning, everyone there knew exactly how to use it so for me that is super inspiring awesome how would you describe the lightning network to someone who is new to the concept okay this is i would make it like a peer program <laughs> So basically, I would tell people that if you want to send money back and forth, uh, Lightning does something similar to getting um, like money into a little pouch and then sharing that pouch with some other's pouches and connecting each other so that money can go back and forth from one place to the other. And then eventually all the transactions get put on the main network. I, it's a very vague explanation, but I think that's how I explain it to my mother and she was able to understand it. <laughs> no, it's a very simple explanation that's very clear <laughs> and concise. All right, next question. Uh, how important is collaboration and interoperability between different Lightning Network implementations and service providers for the song's term success? I think it's very important. Um, I've seen a lot of wallets that simply don't are not like compatible. I'm not gonna name any, but they're simply not compatible with others uh, that stay in specific um, developments and they want to push people to use Lightning in a specific way. And I think it needs to be, again, for it to be easy, for it to be adoptable, it needs to be open for all levels of users, um, from the ones that are running their own node to the ones that just need to have cash in their pockets and are going to be using hot wallets. So it's important that everyone understands that. All right, let's move on to the next one. From your perspective, what impact has the Lightning Network had on the Bitcoin community and ecosystem so far? It's huge. Um, from people that have been has the, the people that have been on Bitcoin since like forever, their solution for everything is like just use Lightning, <laughs> just use Lightning for that, and it and and that brings people together as well. Um, Lightning Lightning developers are awesome. They're all super smart people. They're all super zen as well. So it's I think that it's just part of the culture. Um, I think Lightning we've seen other layer two solutions being developed and nothing has been developed like Lightning has been. Like nothing has been adopted the same way. Um, there's Liquid, which is amazing, but Lightning just, just has a special place in everyone's heart because it's something that we all grew together. All right, last question. Um, in your opinion, what are the key benefits that the Lightning Network brings to Bitcoin users and businesses? Uh, well... <laughs> Usability, <laughs> adoption, <laughs> basically. It's easy, it's fast, it's, um, it's easy to understand and the more we develop it and the more we work on it, it will be easier to get it. So basically, it's what's needed if we want to do widespread adoption. That is, it's, it's key for the people all over the world. And uh, coming from the global south, seeing it, seeing it being used in places like El Salvador and in Costa Rica, uh, seeing the educational programs that are being developed for it, is just a necessity. All right, I have an extra question for you. Just based off of that, what advice would you give to someone who's interested in getting involved with the Lightning Network and contributing to its development? I 
would tell them to go to Libreria de Satoshi, uh, which is where I've learned most of it. Um, this is a project by a dear friend called Dulce. Uh, she has developed an educational program, and she educates people in places like Cuba, Venezuela, and and you also have access to her classes online. Yeah, that's right. It's a very complete program. I recommend it. I know I'm shilling her right now. That was not the plan. But I would tell them to go there because that's where I learn everything right, that I can tell you about. No. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. And what, what, do, what would you like to add about Bitcoin 23 here in Miami and the experience? Bitcoin 23 has been busy. It's always fun to get to see other Bitcoiners. I'm just super happy to see so much Noster on Bitcoin 2023. Next year, we should have our own stage. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Marcy. Everyone, I didn't realize so many people knew about Nostra at Thomas, and just seeing everyone say how excited they are about you know the protocol and, and how it's and, and its relationship to Bitcoin, it's just been it's been, it's been awesome. Okay. Tell us more about its relationship to Bitcoin. Yeah, so um, Nostra by itself has nothing to do with Bitcoin, but you can kind of attach Bitcoin to Nostra, and that's what I, I tried to do with Thomas, which was. You know, yeah, it's a social network built on Nostra, but let's integrate Lightning into, into a social network so that you can, you know, zap your friends and send Lightning things back and forth. And once we once we realized we added this to the network, or that, that people just use Lightning more, and I was like, wow, this is a really powerful idea. Yeah, I love the zap feature on Nostra. It's amazing. But what are your thoughts on Lightning? Uh, what's the best real-world application that you've seen up to now, aside from that? I've always just been really bullish on uh, the, actually, this is like the cyberspace use cases like ways you can use it on the internet I find like a lot of people the brick and mortar use cases it just it seems to be too hard for most people and where I feel like where we can innovate the most is, is online so I feel like the lightning shines the most online versus uh, that's kind of where I'm most excited about how do you think we can increase lightning adoption how can we make it easier for other people to use yeah so like my thesis with Thomas was just like let's just Let's just uh, put it in the app, and they might not even know what it is initially, but um, that's how you get a lot of non bitcoiners to use Lightning. So just make it, just put it in front of their face, and, and, and let's start putting it into other apps, like not just social media, but you know other. You can it's it's just it's, you can integrate into other things. So let's start doing that just to increase the adoption. If you wanted to tell someone um, to start with Lightning. Um, where would you tell them to start? So there's a lot of good like non-custodial uh, wallets like Breeze and things like that. So I always recommend kind of try out the non-custodial wallets and see if those work for you. I also recommend, I know, I sometimes recommend the custodial ones just because they're really easy. So if you really don't know much about it, you want to get into it really quickly, I, I, I don't mind recommending custodial, but yeah, Wallet Satoshi, Breeze, you know, just try, just try the wallets and play with it. Um, try Domus, get some zaps, get some zaps on Domus, and you know, or start earning some zaps. So. All right. And if a developer wanted to get started on Domus and on Lightning, what would you tell them to do? Or how would you tell them to start? Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of biased, but I, I really like Nostra as the playground for experimenting with some of these ideas. We have this concept called Zaps, which allow you to, you know, send Lightning over Nostra. So, yeah, so I think Nostra is kind of the best place for a to so jump in, and it's really easy to get started. So. Great, thank you so much. Um, is there anything you'd like to share to the Lightning community? Uh, anything I'd share to the Lightning community? I don't know, maybe if you're not paying attention to Nostra, just check it out. There's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of acceleration happening in the, in the Nostra space or lighting application. So just, if you haven't tried Nostra yet, just try it out. All right, and visit Nostra in Asia. Yeah, in Nostra Asia. So Nostra.world is the website. You can, it's free, you only have to pay for your travel. So if you want to come check out like what we're building, what's what's coming into the future of Nostra, go to that website and uh, yeah, meet us there. Great, thank you.